Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. It's the month of October. The last time we were here, it was uh, September. We want to give all the glory to the Almighty God for sparing our lives. Only those that are alive can come for Bible studies. Right? Yes. We are healed and we are happy. The Lord has been good unto, the, unto His people. Praise the Lord. And our Father and our Lord, we exalt your holy name for even a time like this. To come together as your children to learn at your feet again. We ask everlasting Father, that by yourself you come and teach us tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let all our asking, let all our deliberation be ordered and be directed by you. By the Holy Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we ask that you take preeminence, O Lord. Amen. Prepare our heart, O Lord. Make our heart simple. Amen. For your word to dwell in tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That every word, O Lord, that you want us to run with, to pay attention to, that we will not miss them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, for the students, O oh Lord, I pray, Lord, we are here and we are ready, available for your, for your move in our lives, for the Holy Spirit to deposit all those things that will do us good, that you will remind us to, those essential things in tonight's studies in the name of Jesus. Amen. For me, O oh Lord, I have no power of my own, and I do not have the ability, I don't have the eloquence. But Lord God Almighty, come and speak. Come and teach us. Amen. Let all, all of us, O oh Lord, be vessels unto honor on your hands this night in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the word that will come out of my mouth will not stand against me Amen. On, in the day of judgment. Amen. And so shall it be for all of us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Actually, I forgot again. I was thinking in this. Prayer before the Bible studies. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, for some time now, we have been going through the book of uh, the epistle of uh, uh, Apostle Peter. And uh, so far, we have gone through first uh, Peter chapter 1. And we started the second chapter and uh, stopped at the tenth verse last week. And the teacher did a very good job in uh, delivering the, the, the studies last week. So but we have gone home in the course of the week and thought about what we are we reminded about all these things as Christians. And the, the paradventure, there are things we want to chip in from what the teacher said last week. Just maybe one minute and one person. Is there anything we want to remind ourselves about or that is uh, uh, one thing that is very important? All the, 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 the things we, we learned they were important, but maybe there's a particular thing that strikes us that we want to uh, uh, talk about again or just mention. Okay. But for me, the, the first thing, uh, verse of the second chapter tells us about those things that we need to get up, get rid of. Those things that should not be part of us anymore. And so, our Christianity will not be complete if those things are still in our life. So, day by day as a way of uh, reconciling with God, as a way of uh, re 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 revealing our lives, we should check uh, ourselves and uh, see that all these things 
are now still with us. Praise the Lord. He said we should get rid of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy and slander of every kind. And if we want to talk about it, we can keep on going on and on about those uh, vices that the Lord doesn't want to be in our lives as his children. That's why I say we will not be hear us alone, but we will be doers of God's word in the name of Jesus. Amen. So today's uh, lesson, we are starting from verse 11 to the end of the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 11 to 25, verses 11 to 25. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we are going to read. Is there a verse reader? Maybe I should read from here. Are we there? First Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 25. Are we there? Yes. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. 17. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. 20. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. 22. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins, bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. 25 and the last one says, For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. So that is the passage that we are studying tonight. He says, the conduct of God's people in the midst of suffering. We remember we, from the introduction we were told why Apostle, oh, I mean, Apostle uh, Peter, I mean, uh, Peter, yeah, Peter, why he wrote this particular, the, his epistle, and to people that he wrote it to. Praise the Lord. Amen. If we still remember, we were told that the, the, the epistle was written to people, the, uh, bro, the brethren that were persecuted, that scattered all over. So the, 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 his epistle is just encouraging them to keep strong in, 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 in the face of persecution, to keep their faith despite all the things that were happening around them at that time. Because he himself suffered he was part of those people that were that was uh, persecuted. Praise the Lord. Amen. We will go through the passages 
we break them down, go through them. But before then, this is what I have as a summary of that. We have been called out of the darkness that all others remain in. That is, the other people are still in darkness. But we have been called out. That is why Christians are uh, uh, referred to as the called out. And into God's light. What are we called out to? Where are we called out to? We have been called out from the darkness into God's own light. So then, it matters all the more that we live good lives now. Not because we might lose God's mercy. We will not, but because we represent him to the world around us. Is that not why we are Christians? The whole world are yet to become Christians. So we are the a piece to that people read. We are the ones to what we do and say that people will see. Remember in the, 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 the book of Acts, the people saw the act of the uh, the apostles, what, what they were doing, that was when they were first called Christians. Peter insists that we must change our understanding of where home is. When we start explaining from there, we will know what we are seeing. We must begin to see ourselves as foreigners in the world, preparing to live to be with our Father. It is not easy to live that way, that is to live the sinful world, to live it out completely. In Christ, we have been forgiven for our sins, and we have been freed from sin's power to tempt us to do evil. But we still want to sin a lot of times, sin. Is beckoning sin is very attractive. It's trying to invite us. The desire to do wrong wages war against our souls. The flesh is lusting against the, the the body. We must engage. We must engage in the battle with ourselves. Now that we have the ability to win it, one aspect of that battle with ourselves is submission to human authorities. Peter's readers at the time must have felt they had they had legitimate reason to rebel against human leadership. While Peter likely wrote these words, the Roman Emperor was Roman Emperor was Nero, an evil man who brutally killed Christians among others. Many of the early Christians lived as slaves in the Roman world, some wickedly mistreated by harsh masters. That is why he's writing this to them. Surely, being free in Christ gave Christians the right to rebel against our uh, worthy human authority. We think so that when we are Christians, we want to, uh, we don't want anybody to, 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 to dictate to us. We want to let people know we are Christian. We want to behave the way we want to behave. We don't want to submit to authority. But he is telling us that we, we need to. He was that was what he was telling those people at that time. That even despite the harshness, death, pride, the treatment, they must still submit. Peter says no. To be free in Christ means that we have a higher authority. God himself, God's will for his people is to submit to our human authorities. Not out of fear of them or because of loyalty to a man or the state, but to freely give respect and honor to all for, because of the sake of Christ. So Peter is clear, Christian must submit to every human authority, whether the emperor, the governor, or the slave master. This does not mean obeying all the human authority tells us. Because that will be the, the question we will ask that, okay, when we say we should submit to every authority, leaders and everything, does it mean everything they say, we have to say yes, we have to follow it? Let's look at uh, the book of, somebody to open the book of Acts chapter 5. Verses 27 to 30. Somebody else should be ready to read Romans 13, verses 1 and 2 to us. Or do I read from here? Acts 5. 5, 27 to, 20, to 30. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in, the, in this name? And behold, Ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon her. Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We have to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom yesterday and 
count on a tree. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we read the book of Romans, they, they, here we are saying that we are saying that what Apostle Peter is telling them is that they should obey all authority. But when our sister just read, is telling us that uh, must we obey you? Because what they are saying, what they are asking them to do is contrary. They are shutting them up, shutting their mouth up, to not to proclaim the name of Jesus anymore. So Apostle Peter rightly told them, are we to obey you or to obey God? In that instance, when they, the authority is misleading us, the authority is asking us to do something that is contrary to the will of God. We must be able to, 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 to know our way around it. Not to be rude or anything, but then to let them know, I am a Christian, I believe in Jesus, this is this, this is this. I think that is what uh, we are getting from there. Romans uh, 13, 1-2. Anybody? Everyone must so submit to God in authorities. For all authorities comes from God. And those in positions of authority are being placed, placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority, rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will then, we, we, I know we understand that this one, we, our sister, the, our sister, the one you read, it's not, in, it's not contradicting what I was, the, the former sister read. God cannot uh, contradict himself. He says we should obey everyone. But in any case, where they, they, whatever we want to obey is going against the God that we serve, we will know that one should take uh, preeminence. Praise the Lord. One should be the real one that we should follow. Praise the Lord. Going further, Peter says that all Christians are called to suffer for doing good. That's what Christ, our, our example, did for us when he suffered on the cross. He did not retaliate or threaten. He endured the pain and sadness of his suffering and took our sins on himself. Dying the dead will be saved. We didn't ask him to do it. But he did it on our on our behalf. Because he did, we are under the protection and care of our shepherd and Lord. What he did for us is what we are enjoying till today. That is the suffering that he went through, the death on the cross of Calvary that, uh, take, that has taken away our sins. This is what we are seeing and we are enjoying. As we continue with the discussion, we will uh, talk more about all these things. So, in the verses 11 to 25, I have the outlines that I have before me are this. The position of believers. This is what the, the, the passage we read is giving us. The position, what, we, what should be our stand? What we as Christians, as believers, should stand for? What we stand for? What people should know us for? Praise the Lord. Remember, we are, we are in the world, we are not of the world. The ways of the world shouldn't be what we, as Christians, should 100% be following. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the breakdown of this, I said, the whole thing is about the position, our position as Christians in this uh, in the world. First Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. It says, uh, talks about aliens and strangers. The land that we should live, that we should live good lives. Let's go to 11 and 12. He said, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to attend from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 11. Dear friends, I urge you. That's a very a, 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 a word that is uh, trying to encourage us. Pull us to himself. I urge you. I beg you. I think it's even stronger than I beg you. It's stronger than I beg you. I urge you. Is there any other translation? I beseech you. I encourage you. So it's, okay, it's, it's, it's stronger than I beg you. As foreigners and exiles, Foreigners and exiles. Where, what, what, what does that phrase mean? What does it mean? As foreigners and exiles. What does that word mean? Those two words, rather. Right? 
Strangers. Strangers. As I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from sinful desires that we should keep away. Remember, that is where the chapter started from. All those things that we should get rid of from ourselves. So we should abstain. We should stay away from sinful desires which went war against your soul. When the word foreigners and exiles comes up, it's telling us that it, it, we are just in a passage of time. We are just in a passage of time. It's just that we are coming from Nigeria and we have a stopover in Amsterdam or wherever. It's Amsterdam where we are coming to. Canada is where we are going. So in Amsterdam, we should now sit back and relax as if we've gotten to our destination. No, we are, we are done yet. We are just, it's just, it's just a passage. So whatever we are seeing here now is a passage of time. And that whatever we do uh, within this passage of time is what we determine where we are going. Mm -hmm. In Yoruba, all of us here, you understand it. It says, uh, some of you are That is, whatever we are enjoying here now, we should, not, we should be mindful of whatever we do so that it doesn't debar us from enjoying the heavenly things that God has prepared for us, the heavenly mansions, and so on and so forth. Is that not so? Foreigners and, uh, and exiles, we are in, in a journey. We haven't gotten to our destination. Where is our destination? Heaven. And heaven at every particular time. This is what we are hearing from here. At every particular time, we should be mindful of that uh, where we are going. If we stay away too far away from the, the stations in Amsterdam, the, 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 the plane might leave you behind. You won't know where they, you won't know they say, people going to Toronto. We, 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 we don't want to be left behind. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Is that okay? That's foreigners and exiles. So we don't sit down and relax as if we've got it. We, are, we still have a place that we are going. No wonder that, that uh, songwriter, I can't remember, that was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. This uh, world is not my home. Mm -hmm. I'm just a passing through. Mm -hmm. The heavens are laid down, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. What is there telling us is the same thing as what we are reading in verse 11. That this, whatever is there is a uh, it's temporary. Heaven is the main domain. I pray we will all get there in Jesus' name. Amen. We should not do anything that will hinder us or pull us back from being able to get to catch the, the, the plane that is taking us there. The train that is heading to heaven. The Lord will help us. That your Bible use the word exile. Exile and but yeah. in James use the word pilgrims. Pilgrims, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think pilgrims is more yes. except if we look into the mind of Peter and begin to say maybe he, had, he was looking at people who ran away, who are exiled mm -hmm. away. Maybe that's why he used the enemy is using exile. But he is using pilgrims, of which the scripture talks that we are, the scripture every time has talked has spoken about us being pilgrims on this earth. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. So, uh, pilgrims, when we say pilgrims, it means people that are, uh, that are, people we say, I'm, I'm taking, I am taking a, a pilgrimage to Mecca. I'm going on a pilgrimage. That means they are going there. To, for sightseeing, yeah, praise the Lord. So pilgrims, that is not their station. They are just there for a brief time. The intention right? of coming back. With the intention of coming back to their base, their home place. Praise the Lord. Verse twelve, because I said verse eleven and twelve it says aliens and strangers. It's the same word that we should live good lives. So live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong. They may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits you. A lot of times, we I said that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. A lot of the, the times in the workplace, we are in, in the midst of other people that are basically maybe some. If you are lucky, you have two, three, four people among ten people that are Christians. We walk in the midst of people that don't even know Christ at all. So most of the time, you see that whatever, whatever you stand for. Whatever your contribution, whatever you are saying, people see it as being 
answer it. Uh, it's not the it's not on the, the it's not the point. It's not conformity. They, they don't want to take whatever you are saying. They have looked uh, at you. They have okay. She's a Christian. Whatever we are agreeing on, whatever we are saying, she's not likely going to uh, buy it. She's not going to agree with us. So we are not going to be of her. Most of the time, we are being persecuted or we are being uh, I, 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 abandon. They don't. Sometimes they don't want to talk to you. They don't want you to call to call you when there are decisions to be made and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. But when there are things that are serious to be discussed, they will still come and call you because they know. Oh, we know you are a Christian. We know you won't tell lies. Then they will call you. Praise the Lord. So what verse twelve? I know we understand it. That I know that we are saying is that. We should maintain our stand. Though they might comment, condemn us for whatever we are doing. But if we maintain it and we do it right, the way the Bible enjoys us to do, and we do, we walk our walk, what we say is what we do, and they see the life we live, those people will still come back. They will still come to the Lord Jesus Christ that we proclaim, that we are professing. Praise the Lord. We should not because of what they are doing, I am the only one out of ten. Uh, leave what you are doing that we know is right according to the standard of the Bible, the word of God. Leave because I'm the only one. Leave to go and join them. It will not be right. So it is better we are on the right path. We are the, the one that is doing the right thing. Maintain our stand. But, but we are still right. Pardon? They to the know that what we are they know doing. that what we are doing is right. So. It is them that we need to win to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not us, living, abandoning our faith to join them. Praise the Lord. Amen. We should not go by the standard of the word that says, if we cannot beat them, you join them. No, we are not going to join them. Because we know we are standing for the truth. And let the truth be the, be the truth. Be sure that what you are doing is in line and is right with the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody can read Galatians 5.18. Galatians 5.18. Galatians 5.18. And if I see it here. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So, if you are in the spirit, you are not under the Lord. It shouldn't be the law of the world that should be controlling us. The, we are supposed to obey. But the word of God should be the, the thing that will guide us. Verses 13 to 17. 13 to 17 says, Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority. We have said that. That is why we read those passages. Whether to the emperor or anybody, we should submit to the governor. We should who are sent by God to punish? That is, if we are doing something wrong, we should expect them to put us to subjection or punishment. Sometimes we, we can be even be persecuted for doing the right thing. But if we if we if we suffer the persecution and go along, we don't complain, we don't murmur, we will be commended by God for that. But if we decide to do something wrong, and we are maybe complaining and everything, God does not have a hand in that. We cannot complain that they are punishing us because we are Christian. When we know that what we are doing is not, is not the right thing. It could even be in the place of work. You are expected to resume at 8 o'clock. You are coming at 15. Coming to work at 8 and it's a consistent thing. It's not just one day. They know you for that. And then, then the manager will say, you are always coming there. We say, oh, because I'm a Christian. That is not going to, God is not, doesn't support that. So, we maintain our Christianity and make sure we don't allow people because of our Christian faith. Talk ill of the Jesus that we carry. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verses 13 to 17, I caption it as submission to authority, to rulers. We should obey rulers and leaders and honor authority. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our manager is there. We cannot, because we are Christian, bypass them to do some things as if we own that place. The Lord will help us. 
Verses 18 to 25, 18 to the end. 18 says, Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps, and so on and so forth. What we are saying here is that we should submit to not only our leaders, that are, that are good. Some leaders are actually good. And some, it doesn't matter what you do. They won't, they won't go, they won't see you eye to eye. They will not cooperate. But... Boss not the leader now. I think the government is the leader, but boss now, as an employee... employee. Every human authority, that's what my Bible says. Uh, Every human authority. What does your Bible say? No, someone submit to your... Master. There's master, there's servant, there's authority, there's emperor, there's governor, there's everything. But whatever be the case, submit to every authority. The Bible even makes us to realize they have been put there so that they can correct us, so that they can lead us aright. Praise the Lord. Every authority. It's not only in the church, but everywhere. Praise the Lord. So if we look at, uh, there are some of the, uh, the one says masters. So, master servant, we know why we say somebody is an employee, employer, mm -hmm. uh, servant, and master. We all don't know what they stand for. Maybe you have somebody working for you that you are paying. The one that is being paid has to be responsible to the master that is paying him. Is that not what you are saying? Yes. The same thing in your place of work. As an employee, you have the, I mean, the your employer has the authority over you to direct you and to do, tell you what to do. That is what we are saying here. Then the last one, I said Christ's example of submission. So we are Christians. Who we follow is Jesus Christ. Whose examples we are obeying is Jesus Christ. But let's see how Jesus himself is submitted to every authority. Every authority. So here I have four outlines. I said aliens and strangers. That is 1 Peter 2, 11 to 12. Then second one says submission to authority, to authority, to, to rulers, to everyone. The third one says submission to, mas to masters, masters and servants. And the last one says Christ's example of submission because it is Christ that we are following. So he should be, he is our example. Mm -hmm. Whatever he does is what we are do. We are, we are, we are trying to emulate. Follow me as I follow Christ. Praise the Lord. Twenty-one to twenty-five. 21 says, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body. On the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Mm -hmm. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of, of your souls. Praise the Lord. Amen. That 21 to 25 is loaded with so many things. We see how Jesus Christ, when he was being insulted, pardon? I'm not. Mm -hmm. When he was being uh, insulted, punished, and everything, he had the power to retaliate or to confront them, mm -hmm. or to speak bad words, or speak evil words, evil words to them. But he didn't, because he knows his mission. He knows why all those things are happening to him. He knows these are things that we, that we compound into being him. He's been going to the cross. Every accusation they made against our Lord Jesus Christ, they were not right. And he knew that they were not right, but he didn't argue with them. He succumbed, he just submitted himself willingly. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the, the, verse, the verses 24 to 25 is talking about that sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ went to on the cross for us to redeem us. Is that not so? Like uh, what we have in the book of Isaiah, 
Isaiah 59, 53, praise the Lord. What we have in Isaiah 53 is what they are repeating, telling us here. That Jesus had to go to the cross to die a shameful death for us. He who, know, who knew no sin, praise the Lord. All the insults, all the beatings, all, everything that he endured was just for our sake. Praise the Lord. Can somebody open the book of uh, Isaiah 53? Let's see. What they are talking here is exactly what we have in Isaiah 53. Verse 9. And the man is great with the wicked and the rich in his bed. Because he had done no violence, mm. neither was any deceit in his mouth. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we see that Jesus Christ, we know that Jesus Christ did not commit any offense. He did not do anything. But look at the punishment they gave him wasn't uh, supposed to be, but he took it because, because of us. He had already done that so that we can have the free life that we are enjoying up to today. And uh, we are being punished for doing good. The book of uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12, we blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for righteousness' sake. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because we know our reward. Praise the Lord. So, and uh, if we endure, we are punished, we are, we, if we endure, we know what awaits us. That the Lord will commend us for everything that we are we endure in the face of persecution do we have any contribution before we have any contribution from verses 11 to 25. yeah i just want to refer us to that 24 and 25 because it is one of the most controversial bible passage maybe we should all open it yeah, 24 and 25 is one of the most controversial Bible passages among Christianities because that is one of the verse that some Christians use and to claim that the, the purpose of the death of Jesus was to heal us of sickness. While others say no, that's not the primary purpose. And when you read it very well and read it in life, remember that when the Bible was, when the people who know these, these books were written, they didn't read them, they didn't write them as verses. It was the, when the Bible was canonized, that they broke it into verses. So like, this Peter were right reading, Peter didn't write all this as, and put it verse one, two, three. He wrote a letter. So it was those bishops, those reverend fathers in the first century, after Jesus, that canonized the scripture after him that canonized and broke them into verses. Now, when you look at it very well, from verse 23, he was talking about how Jesus Christ was crucified. And in verse 24, he says, Who's, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we be there to, to live unto righteousness. By whose stripes we were healed? We were healed of what? Of the That's sin he was talking about. And now, if you now come to 25, he, if you look at it, he starts with a conjunction there. For, so it still continue. He says, by whose stripes you are healed. For we were as sheep going astray. When somebody falls sick, you can't say he's going astray because it's not his fault. So you will see that he's actually talking about sin. But Christians in this world, they've taken the blood of Jesus and the death of Jesus to be primarily for healing. And that's why the primary reason, which is our sin, what brought Jesus from this world, is being neglected. And we are not saying that through his blood we, cannot, we are not being healed, we are being healed. But there is too much of our emphasis on the healing of sickness that people don't care about sin, which is the biggest uh, disease. So when you read that passage, please know that it's talking about sin. You have to connect 23, 24, 25 together to be able to and see that he what was he was saying in 23, he continued in 24, and he, he made a conclusion about it in 25. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, um, Brother 
Pastor Juan, I think we should send the, uh, uh, oh, the wife is still here. There's a question here. Uh, it asks a question. Muslims say they are servants of God. Difference between Christian servanthood and Muslim servanthood. Because if you look at verse 16 of that chapter 2, what does it say? What does verse 16 say? There's a word. Live as free people. Do not use your freedom as a cover of Verse 16. Yes, as free. 18, is it? 16. As men are not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God. What does that mean? As God's slaves. As God's slaves. Mm -hmm. You see, these are the confusion that happens when the scriptures are being interpreted. That is why a lot of, sometimes a lot of people have uh, criticized NIV. There are even some Bible passages that uh, passages that are removed. That the, uh, 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 even in the gospel, now you see that they remove it is in Indians, it's not in the NIV. The whole verse, one or two verses are removed. Now, there's a difference between servant and slave. Okay, there's a big difference between servant and slave. I think Muslim call themselves slaves, mm. not servant. Mm. Slaves, one. You back one yeah. Eru, 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 Eru is slave. Mm -hmm. Servant is a different way. Servant is a form of minister. Mm -hmm. All of us, we are servants in our places of work, but we are not slaves, okay? We are not slaves. So, the, the, the Muslim, they use emphatically the word slave. But the scripture, sometimes there is confusion in the Bible. Not, not that God made a mistake, but people who interpreted or who wrote editions of Bible, they begin to use words that sometimes cause confusion. Now, here is servants of God. In NIV, it's slave. But the issue is, even if Muslim use the word servant and Christian use the word servant, what, what, what is the difference? Muslims say themselves as servants that is not about the function of what they do. That, that is, they see themselves as slaves or servants not based on what they do as, as ministry or as work of God. Why Christians see themselves as servants, which is interpreted as minister? As what we do for God. In fact, when you look at it, if Muslims are arguing that they are servants and we are servants, and that we are not sons and daughters of God, refer them to another passage. If I can remember, Peter himself was the one who, who, who described Jesus as he said that man is servant of God. He used the word servant to describe Jesus too. And he used it to describe what Jesus came to do, ministry, your ministry. But Papa Lombi taught us this in if was it in if I've forgotten where I, where I sat down there in Papa Lombi and he taught us about the, the word minister and servant more, some years ago, almost 20 years ago. And so the word servant, when you go and go, we, we, we go to try and look at the Greek word and see what is telling us. But interpretation of scriptures make it sometimes very difficult because they don't see the right word to use in English. But the servanthood of Muslims, according to them, makes them a slave. Mm -hmm. And we know a slave does not have a right. Mm -hmm. And if Peter used the word slave, or, or, or uh, Paul used the word slave, you will see the context is based on what was happening in Rome at that time. There were truly slaves. There were Christians who were slaves not to God, but to man, to masters. Okay? They were truly slaves because either they were captured or uh, something like, you know, serving as slave, no rights. Slaves don't have rights, but the servant have rights. Take Nigeria. We always have uh, housemates. They are not slaves. That is why if you see somebody uh, treating their housemate bad, it means that person is looking at them as slaves. Mm -hmm. Whereas they are workers. Yes. Just as we are workers. Mm -hmm. It's just the same one we come to do here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come from the Philippines and every part to come and yeah. let people take care of babies. Mm -hmm. What do they call them? Nannies. Not to have So you can't call them slaves. They are, they, are, they are workers, they are servants, being paid for what they do. So, the servanthood of God, as 
as Pastor Lord Lewis is asking and is saying it's a different thing from the way Muslims see. Muslims see themselves as no right. Mm -hmm. They are slaves. They don't see themselves as children of God. We see ourselves as children of, children God, of God and in our relationship to God, but in our work for God, we see ourselves as ministers or servants. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I purposely ended it briefly, I mean, at least, so that we can have enough time to contribute or to ask questions. It could be a word that we used, we didn't use properly, or we ought to have said it this way, and so on and so forth. Okay. These things are just things that we already know, it's just a, a reminding us. So, in the South uh, Carolina, the Master is encouraging us that we should be obedient to don't get punished because you did something that you're not supposed mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And now complain that, oh, I'm being persecuted. If it's other people that did it, they won't talk. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a Christian, I now made a mistake and they are now. So if you have, if you have done wrong and they punish you for doing that wrong, don't complain. They have nothing to do with your Christian experience. Mm -hmm. It's because you have made a mistake yes. and you have been punished. So if that is not persecution. Mm -hmm. So we should not, it's, like, it's, it's, it's telling us we should not mix it two together. Yeah. I think oh, it's, it's because yeah. I'm a Christian, that's why they are frowning at what I did. But if you did wrong, you have done wrong, and you should face the consequence. Like, and that's why I said we should not suffer like a common criminal. Mm -hmm. I think we have been persecuted. No. Mm -hmm. If you have committed an offense or a sin, face the consequence and don't. Don't leave that with your with your no, faith. Your, your Praise the Lord. These are things that we need. Maybe we should just practicalize it. Give examples. Like I said, coming to work late, mm -hmm. you know the time you are supposed to come. What example can we give in this instance that Pastor Adele just said? We did we're doing something? Yeah, uh, within? Gave, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So for all of us, I know we should be able to <coughs> differentiate. Between things that we do willingly, that we are suffering for, those things we should not claim, at, oh, because it's because I'm a Christian. Oh, it's because they don't like me. Assess what you have done. Look at what you have done. Is it right? Judge yourself by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Let the word of the Lord be the yardstick by which we measure our actions, our behaviors. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when we are we do we are doing things wrong, we should not claim that we are being persecuted. That is not persecution. We are just suffering for our yes. disobedience. Right. Let's look at this example. Since you asked us to give us look at this woman in the US, a Christian who works for the like the local government. And they ask her, you know, they ask her to uh, you know, she has the, the, the license to conduct marriage. <laughs> And she refused, she refused to conduct the marriage. Mm -hmm. No, she refused. She said she was not going to sign, sign it. She was and not going to get married. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. So, what do you say about that? Yes. That's a persecution. Is it a persecution? I, won't, I wouldn't say it's a persecution because when she was employed, it's probably going to be streamlined, lined up. So, these are your responsibilities. So, it's left for you to take it up. If it's a, as a Christian, and she was employed, and now they ask her to sign uh, to but join two gay lesbian or two gay two men together in marriage and say because of my faith. And I think they sacked her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So do we see that as persecution? Do we see it as that you didn't do your job? Didn't you know the, uh, that it's part of your responsibility when you do the job? You understand? The Lord. So all these things. Uh, how, how do we explain it? So I want us, let's see. Okay, sir. In, in the, to me, the way I look at it, as at the time she was employed, that was not in the practice. Okay. So by the time it now has a conflict with her faith, faith. and by by the state, you have freedom of uh, religion, mm. and you can, you can practice whatever religion. So I want to believe it's persecution. She should have been transferred. For another section 
where it would not have conflict with our religion, religion or with our faith. Amen. Brother, yeah, I think they should I, finally won. I want to say, I want to say that uh, 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 if, if it was not part of the regulation when she was employed for that job, along the line, when those things were being uh, in motion or something, couldn't she have asked for a, what is it, a transfer from that particular area? But the way I see it, right, you have your own belief. If you know, your own belief should not affect my own belief. So you should not force me to believe in what you believe. Mm -hmm. If I cannot force you to believe in what I believe, why should you force me to oh. believe in what you believe? So what are you saying in relation to this lady then? So she has the right, that's oh, what she's trying to say, that right. I can't okay. do it because that is not my belief, it's against my own belief. So yeah. you cannot enforce your own belief or my belief. I know, I know in US and in most of the developed countries there is freedom of worship. That's yeah. Right. You understand? Mm. But sometimes the freedom, that freedom, does it affect the, the performance of your work, what you do. That is what we have to look into. I'm not saying I support that yet, the priority refused. Mm -hmm. I support. You know, I support. When she, the thing came out, I was happy. And I, for me, I will not, the same thing she did is what I will do. Yes. But uh, I want us to look at it uh, very well. That if we are being asked to give a job, or you get a job in the place, and they give you your job suspicion, you see things like that. Mm. It is either you mm. resign you your job. Mm. Uh, mm. yeah. When some people gave me job, when we first of all got to this nation, uh, immediately in that interview, I said, I can now work on Sundays. They say, Well, I say, I'm a priest. Because they don't understand the word pastor. They don't know what pastor is. I say, I'm a priest. And they say, hey, Okay, okay, we will look for a way. But they were looking for technology. So they say they will each time when it's Sunday they will you say, oh, they will move they will give they will not make me to work. So they gave me the job. Maybe three or four months after, my boss came and says, Steve, we don't have anybody to work this Sunday. You have to do the work. And I said, Pastor, how, what am I going to do? Not come to church? So what did I do? I obey her. I went to that work. But from Sunday morning, submitted with the paper submission. Not that I, I didn't have another job, but thank God immediately I submitted it, that Friday I got another job. You understand? So I obeyed. The reason why I obeyed is that so it's, a, it's a moral law. It's not a sin like they say somebody should come and commit abortion mm -hmm. or a doctor they have been asked to do abortion or something like that. But as I said, it's just a, a, a test. Uh, a test. Okay. If you refuse that Sunday, mm -hmm. you will not repeat it again. But if you accepted that Sunday, they will repeat it. Be giving you yeah, if you refuse sometimes, yes. you can be sacked. Yeah, I mean, uh, and then you that will go into your record. No. Or our laws. If you go to the record, mm. look, and when you want to get a reference, yes, mm. you, you don't need to so, well, let's, let's look at it. You them at the interview. If they, so, yes. why is it that you Yes, win? that is it. They knew that I told them, but yes. let's look at it this way. You know, sometimes uh, there are some moral issues that are not actually seen. Look at the, the parable of the good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. What made those priests not to wait? They were already in the mm -hmm. So, they will ask you, for example, I've attended one guy interview that they say, if you, are, if you are preaching on the pulpit, and there's and the, and the emergency. big emergency, a person losing his life, will you not come? So, right away, I, I, that job, I can't take it because I don't want my faith to be tested. Mm -hmm. You see, there are times that there are certain things that are more and more that is not sinful, it won't, God will not count it to you as a sin. You understand? A pastor can still leave the pulpit yes. and go and save life. Yes. A, somebody who is going to be shot can come in and as a pastor, I can hide him there and tell lies and say, oh, it's not here. Is that not a lie? Yes. But those are moral laws, yes. those are moral issues. Yes. You understand? Because you save the life of that person. Just like the three, the two Hebrew midwives. The Pharaoh said, kill the Jewish boys. But they lied. 
I said, you know the Jewish women? Yeah. Yeah. You understand? So, I mean, I mean, that is it's based on the power is against evil. That is it. That's mm. not that. Mm. That lie against, that lie for a criminal. No, 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 no. We are not talking about criminality here. We are talking about things that maybe can, when it comes to life, sometimes when it comes to life, that uh, saying that you are going to serve God or worship God, you take a second, uh, a, 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 a lesser role. Mm -hmm. you, uh, going to do that job should be, should take the what do you call it? Praise uh, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What you do is that once you do such a thing, don't let it continue. Yeah. It's either you resign, like I did, that the following Monday I submitted my letter with you. Because, like you said, they will say, well, he took it last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Let's keep on giving that him. <laughs> yeah, uh, amen. Before you know it, you are no more coming back to life. But I resign because I don't want to... See, there are times that as a pastor or as a Christian, you don't want crisis. You don't want to cross confusion in the place. That's part of what we yes, are doing here, too. Mm -hmm. you, want to, you want to want peace. Instead of fighting for your rights, mm -hmm. you, can, that you know that your rights can nice. cause some problem. Why don't you make that sacrifice and hope your life is done and get out of the place? Amen. Praise the brother Maslino. I was going to say that. Is, uh, in, in your question is answered? It's answered. I was going to say that um, light cannot run away from darkness. So you yeah, need yeah. a lady to leave her job because of death. She, she has to stand her ground as to that faith. So mm -hmm. light cannot run from darkness. But if that is the laid down principles, you have to go elsewhere. To look for what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Naya, praise the Lord. They know they say this is these are things that we want to do. So it's either you follow it or you find your own job somewhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my question and my like what pastor said. Move forward a little bit. My Please. question and what pastor said, like in terms of the um they told him to work on Sunday and then he resigned. Most companies they usually ask for like exit interview. What was the reason why you know you are leaving the organization? Yeah. And in such cases, maybe you want to get a new job. Because I see in North America, reference is a very huge yes. mm. factor. And sometimes you don't know the heart of the person that is giving like reference, like mm -hmm. in case they want to know your work. Because mm -hmm. I've heard of cases where like like a family friend I know here in Canada, like. It was time for reference, mm -hmm. and the reference, um, the, best, the reference for the job, told the job she was going to get that um, she's always so involved in church. That because they asked, what, what do you think her weakness is, and she's always so involved in church activities. It happened to me before, so I and, know what you are saying. Yeah, okay. and eventually she didn't get the job. So mm -hmm. in cases like that, because I know, yeah, yes. like. When you said moral, like living and not passing Christ, mm. see if you cannot help out with that. Praise the Lord. It depends on the type of job. Some jobs, they might not go uh, into the details, asking you why you are leaving the job. Mm. No. Especially no. professional no. jobs. They, 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 might, they might not. It depends. It depends. So I have a, before I finish, I have another instance, a, a, an example. When I was working in the nursing home, not me alone, a lot of us, you give medication to, uh, to the resident and everything. And then this particular day, this person is to take a wine, wine, al alcoholic wine or whatever. Alcohol. Alcohol. So I was like, I've never seen it before that you have to give me. So then it will say, oh, we are not going to be able to give this. They said, no, you have to give it. Mommy, you have to give it. Because it's a doctor's prescription. It's in their medma, what we call medication administration record. It's there. It's a medication to them. So what do we do in that instance? We still need to give. Yeah, that's true. My, marijuana is being... <laughs> marijuana we give, yeah. even now. Cannabis, all these things, we give, we give. Yeah, because the, the, the issue is that I'm going to answer your question about this issue that you are talking about. Well, be, uh, about uh, alcohol and marijuana and all those things. They are not sitting, please. You see, Christianity 
likes uh, abstinence instead of Russia, uh, like instead of saying, okay, I you, can, you can go out, but I don't get drunk. Like in Cuba, we <laughs> Instead of saying you can drink alcohol, but don't get drunk, they know that if you keep on drinking, you get addicted. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the body will begin. If your body is satisfied with one cup today, next week, one, two, one two, cup will not be enough. So you will get to a level of getting drunk, and mm -hmm. you can either kill yourself or kill other people. Now, in actual fact, Drinking alcohol is never a sin. But when you read the scripture very well, you are a fool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A fool might not be a sinner. Mm -hmm. Okay? But do you want to be a fool? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a fool? So, but all this marijuana and all those things, any one of us here who says he doesn't take alcohol, mm -hmm. alcohol even now, your medication you take mm -hmm. contains all these things. You understand? Mm -hmm. They contain little, little bit of it. The only thing is that the purpose for which we are using it is different. If you are working in the hospital or in the medicine, and they ask you to give little, little thing of this as medication, it's measured. You need it's to give it because it's measured. It's measured. It's not going to kill them. Okay? It's not going to destroy them. Are we okay? But that doesn't mean that as a pastor, I'm saying you can go out and be careful. Pastor, pastor. Huh? Yeah, time is it's becoming a fool when you depend on that alcohol. That's what that is. What not that drinking it is a problem. But you are not the one drinking it. The scripture says, uh, the scripture, the scripture, if you read through, say give wine. No, no, he says give it to somebody who is vanishing. That is, it was uh, that language. It's not saying somebody who is going to die maybe of sickness. It's talking about somebody who is well, foolish. Go and read the very It's talking about somebody who is foolish. That is the person they say we go and take that okay. okay, and that is what I'm talking about moral issues, moral laws. That when you do it, doesn't say you won't make heaven. There are moral laws. Okay, that is just morality. That, for example, as a pastor. As a pastor, there are certain things I should not do. That is, even because I'm a pastor, even though they are not sinful, I can't go to a party and everybody begin to dance, 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 and I come there. We begin to dance and begin to spread money. No, no, as a pastor, it's a moral thing. Because what happens is that there are people of lesser faith who will say, Look at pastor. Look at that pastor dancing and, and throwing money. Whereas, it won't say you won't get to heaven. So, for the sake, Paul, Paul said that, say if you are eating meat, yeah, meat, and uh, for the sake of a bread, you can stop it. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, there are certain things you don't do, as, like as a pastor, okay? But let's not talk too much because of that. Yeah, I don't want to answer your question. Your question is a lot of us, when we are in a place of work, time, we have to spend our time. When we are in a place of work, we take our religion and we use it to flog our leaders. You know what I mean by flogging? You, you are not respecting your leader. You are not courteous. Listen, if you are a very respectful person, if you are a person who do your work diligently, if you go to your boss and say, I'm a Christian, I can't work on you will listen. Based on, the, based on that and the fact that you pray. But if you are the type that is causing trouble, you don't do your work well, if you go to your boss and you say you don't want to work, he looks at you as being lazy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like my own example that I gave. Even though this uh, Indian woman, elderly woman, made me to work that Sunday, when I resigned, she, she, she wrote a letter to the human resources and said, this is one of our social best, and if he's ready to come back, we will give him, we will give him the job. Mm -hmm. He wrote a very good demo, which I can deliver. You understand? But I think in the performance of his work, he found out that he just needed me to work that song on because nobody will do it. So if I have been abusing her, I have not been doing my work, 
attitude. You think you, attitude you, if I have attitude and say, oh, they are maltreating me because I'm a Christian. No, please. In a place of work, even if your child, your son, is your born, mm -hmm. please That's respect him. Okay? You may even have a, a bigger degree, more than your boss. Please respect him. Because he is the authority over your life. As far as that place of work. And if you don't respect, you are even sinning. Mm -hmm. God will see you as disobedient, mm -hmm. disobeying your leader. So a lot of us, we are not obeying our leaders. We are, we, even in the church, you abuse your pastor. You do things like that for your pastor, and then something happens. Hey, it's because I am this. And is God in, does God say that? Does God say you should be rude or you should not honor? Didn't the scripture say honor? Give honor to whom honor is due? <laughs> what of our parents? How can a child be, 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 be rude to his parents or her parents? All these things, but we overstand that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible is a summary. Mm -hmm. The Bible is a summary. So, mm -hmm. most of so, these things, most of these things are things we need to know and so that we can go be in line with the, with the, with the, with the mind of God. So, the Lord will help us. Mm -hmm. The understanding of the Bible will actually help us to be able to know what is right and what is not. Right. There are so many things that are. Uh, moral that has to do with morals that we deal with on a day to day basis. Uh, sister, sorry, the time we overspend our time. So maybe next week. What does it, what do you want, you want to ask? Is that one minute, one minute. That is, we concluded on what I want to say. Okay. It's based on where he intended the uh, okay. advice. I just want to chip in that apart from work, generally our home, our relation with family members. We can't totally claim right most of the time. Mm. What I want to, the example I want to cite is based on where that be concluded. Mm. Like when I got married to my husband, I almost had issue with my mother-in-law. He, she confronted me and said, "I shouldn't." My husband said, "He doesn't like the word eh, 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 that he wants me to be free. That I should be calling him by his name." So when Mama was not around, but when he came after like five years, so he had, she had issue with me. So I sat myself down because I'm confused. The son said, no, I don't want her, her, her. don't call me daddy, somebody. Mama said, respect my, so I called him one day. Respect as his, name, his name okay. starts with B, it's Babatunde and Bolanle. Mama doesn't want to call Babatunde or so. So I started calling him B. 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 Oh, she doesn't that's complain. the genesis of B. B. That's the genesis of B. Oh, B. B. Oh, no, I so I'm still calling him. By his name, <laughs> my my sister in law. One minute. Yes, my sister in law. I was like nine months senior. I got to know my husband through him. Their last one. Mama said you should not call the other somebody that I'm older than. <laughs> so <laughs> as she's fighting with me, she's fighting with that with that lady. So one day I just said, any time I want to address you, I will be saying, "Mommy, are you needed?" She too will say, "Mommy, for you." Mama will not talk. So we we have That's wisdom. That's all. That's all. Praise the Lord. Our Father and our Lord, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we appreciate you for tonight's teaching. We know, Lord God Almighty, so many things are embedded into this. But Lord, we need you by your Holy Spirit to guide us, to teach us. When uh, on issues concerning our lives and our Christian race, Lord Jehovah, do not leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Help and guide us in the right place Amen. so that we don't go against you. Amen. We want to do your will, O oh Lord. We want to surrender ourselves totally unto you. That that pleases you is what our heart desires. Lord, help us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Sorry, Sister Naya. We forgot that I'm climbing it. You can you can talk to me. Okay. Praise the Lord. Or we will spend our time by ten minutes. Or, but our prayer also will be short tonight. And for those of us who are on the on the phone line on Wednesday, we're just going to continue with the prayers we've been saying. And I think even the minister session, the same prayer areas are focused on. Amen. Amen. Uh, moral issues and. 
and sins can be differentiated, but we need to be very careful so that we don't put one for the other. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I, there are two passages that will be that I used on Tuesday and Wednesday with the ministers and the intercessory. I want us to open to Joshua chapter three. Joshua chapter three, verse five, and then we will see First Samuel chapter thirty, and you will see that the the area of First Samuel chapter thirty now combine the two messages that have come uh, in the last two Sundays: the way of the Lord and destiny. Okay, but in the area of Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, uh, the way we used it last on Wednesday, on Tuesday and Wednesday, is the fact that uh, God, God, God promises He's going to do something wonderful in our life. Okay? And that we should sanctify ourselves. Can you see it there? Mm. And Joshua said unto people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. You right? Are you following? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and the word tomorrow there, we use it to describe the future. So we are in the last quarter of the year. So the last quarter of the year, which is the October, November, December, is our future too. And that we need to satisfy ourselves for the wonders of God to happen. Now what is wonders? Wonders is, uh, you can categorize them as miracles, blessings, and those things we ask for. So I pray that the Lord will do wonders in our life in this last quarter of the year. Amen. Amen. Then the second part is First Samuel chapter 30. Let's, let's open to it. And like I said, we've been uh, in the last two Sundays, the first message is the way of the Lord. And this uh, last week Sunday is about fulfilling destiny. And so in this First Samuel chapter 30, David David ran away from King Saul. Okay, he was made king. David was ordained king. That was his destiny. But he ran. Saul wanted to kill him. He ran away. And now he ran away 400 men that supported him, followed him. And to make matters worse, the Amalekites came, burned down their camp, took their children and wives away. And the people wanted to stone David. So, problem upon God, problem. And if you are in that type of situation, that things keep on happening over each other, as you are trying to solve one, another one is happening, or maybe you have not even solved that, another one is happening, take solace in the fact that God has not forgotten you. Okay? And what did David do? It's like the scripture is written for us as an example. You understand? So, what did David do? David didn't just begin to look for a way to go and fight. David asked from the Lord. He asked for the way of God. Okay? And as David was going on, going, he met a young Egyptian boy that we can call destiny helper. He did not look down that boy. He fed the boy. He was a slave. He fed him and it was through that boy that the restoration took place in his life. Amen? Mm -hmm. so, so in that passage, we are talking about the way of God. Some of us, we need to get to a level that we need to, even if you are going to spend three days of prayer and fasting just to say, Lord, what is your way? That won't pray upon. In this situation that I've been back in, in these areas of my life, Lord, what is your way? If that is the only point you will pray for three days, is what it. David asked the Lord, what is your way? Do I go? Do I pursue? And God said, pursue. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, what are we saying now? We are talking about, Lord, let your wonders take place in our life. This last quarter of the year. And the wonders part of it is that God will protect you from evil. Amen. All this COVID-19 thing, look at the way it's increasing. And today we had that this, the, the most powerful president in the world, the strongest man in the world. The strongest man in the world and his wife contacted him. They, they flew him to the hospital now. Not that he's sick, you understand, but to, to take precaution. So if, if, if somebody like that could get infected, who am I? Who are we? It's only God that can protect us. Praise the Lord. And God will protect us. Okay? 
And one of the instructions in Joshua, I want us to open back, go back to Joshua chapter 3. So we're just going to pray for 20 minutes. Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. What is the instruction? Can somebody tell me what the instruction is? There. Yeah. To sanctify yourself. Huh? Where's your Bible? You're looking up. You have to have a Bible. That is your that is your cutlass. When, <laughs> when you're coming to church, it's like a farmer. How can a farmer now have a, 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 a cutlass? A student has to have a pen. Okay. So the the our own part of it is sanctify yourself. And here it is. I, I look through the Bible. Each time God says he wants to do a miracle, the instruction is consecrate yourself, sanctify yourself. Don't do something that is wrong. That is always the instruction before. Look at Deuteronomy 28. He said, if you, you understand. And so we need to, and that is why fasting, this is where fasting comes in. You know, when you are fasting, what you are doing is not that you are bribing God. It's that you are disciplining your flesh. It's not the time for you to begin to do sinful things. You understand? So, the instruction is, please sanctify. I want us to go into uh, this three months with consecration, sanctification. And san to sanctify yourself or sanctify, or to be sanctified, you have a role to play. In the Old Testament, instructions were given on how to people should sanctify themselves. All is about uh, uh, make sure you don't commit sin and do things that are wrong, or abuse people or those. But he said, the most important is that release yourself to the Holy Spirit. Holy, have the Holy Spirit to come and sanctify you. You understand? Even when you want to do great work for God, you still need the Holy Spirit to sanctify you. See, and you shall receive power from who? From the Holy Spirit. Before you can do great wonders for God. I want us to rise up. I want us to begin to thank the Lord for, for sparing our life. Nine months is gone. Please thank the Lord. Thank the Lord, though. Thank the Lord. It's not because you know how to take care of yourself. It's because of His grace. I want you to appreciate the Lord. Thank Him and say, Lord, I really appreciate you. Nine months is gone. I am still standing. It's not by my own power. It's by your grace. My family is still standing. Not by my own power. Not because we know how to take care of our families. Not because we know how to take care of our children. But by His grace. Let's appreciate Him. Let's appreciate the Lord. Thank the Lord. Appreciate Him. Let's thank the Lord for provisions. Because all that we needed, his son has provided for us. The food we eat, the water we drink. Oh, you might think, I worked for it, so I have the money to buy food, okay. But what of the air you breathe in? Can you pay for it? Can you pay for it? Let's appreciate the Lord. Those things look so common, but they are very important. Let's thank the Lord that those little, little things that we need to do, like going to washroom, they are, if you don't pee for two days, then you know the importance. And your bladder is filled up. Especially men. When men have prostate, pro, prostate enlargement, and their bladder is filled up and they can't pee. <laughs> so you will appreciate the Lord. You will appreciate the Lord if you want to do the second one. And you are so loaded and you can't pass and escape us. Let's appreciate the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for taking care of our families. Thank you for protecting our children. Thank you for protecting our spouse. Thank you, Lord, for the job we do. Not just the provision of the job, but for the strength you have given to us to be able to go to do that work and to go and do the work.
Thank you for supplying our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, Lord. As a church, let's appreciate the Lord that this COVID came and we were not consumed. We drive out every day and we come back home peacefully. There are gunshots, there, there are stray bullets. Stray bullets, stray bullets. You drive on the street, people cross the intersection and God protected you from, from hitting them. You know what it means? For you to hit human beings, you might not be guilty. But the Wahala, the Wahala, before the person, you will be found not guilty. Before the judge, it might take one or two years going to court. Let's appreciate the Lord. Lord, I drive around, but Lord, you protected me from hitting a human being. Even animals in this land, you hit animals is problem. Let's appreciate the Lord. You can continue to mention there are so many things to appreciate the Lord for. All that we will need to say now is to sing, Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have been that thy hands are provided. Great is thy faithfulness of unto me. One more time. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, we know that it's by your grace that we are standing. If we should count our blessing, all those things you have done for us, if we name them one by one, we cannot name them. Lord, Lord for we know there's nothing too small to say, Lord, we cannot appreciate you for. And there's nothing too big for us to say that either. The what of the air we breathe in. We can't pay for it for that. Even if we think that we, we have money to pay for the food we eat. But Lord, we can't pay for the air. And even the food we pay for, you provided the food. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you because Lord, it has pleased you that as members of this church, we are not in trouble. Thank you, Lord. Lord, people drive. A lot of our members drive so many kilometers every day Thank based on their job. But Lord, you, you, you protect them, you, you save them from getting into trouble, from beating human beings. Lord, all this, Lord, we just say that we appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the midst of this darkness, oh Lord, Father, you, you protected us. This storm, this storm that is ravaging, Lord, could not bring us down. We were not consumed. Thank you, Lord. Just because of your faith. Oh, yes, Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we cannot thank you enough. Mm -hmm. But Lord, all our life, all our totality, all our heart, we use it to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, sanctify yourself. Let's take it this way. The first is to ask the Lord to forgive for the past. And the second is to say, Lord, like the three Hebrew Jews, I propose not to defy myself as I go into this last quarter. Help me, O Lord. Help me not to walk in sin. Help me not to fall into temptation. But first and foremost, let's ask the Lord to forgive us. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us.
for all that we have done wrong, that despite the Lord's faithfulness, we have been unfaithful in so many areas of our life. Lord, we are sorry. Father, we come before you with a humble heart and we confess everything we have committed. Please, Father, have mercy. We repent of them. Please, Father, have mercy and forgive us. Bless us upon our righteousness in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we move forward in this last quarter, Lord, we propose in our heart not to defile ourselves. Holy Spirit, divine, please help us. Tell the Holy Spirit to help you. To pass his anointing upon you, to come upon you. So that the power to live a holy and righteous life. The power huh, not to defy yourself. Sin can be tempting. Sometimes it looks beautiful. It's like it's like painted rusted iron that you paste in, in gold color. That is what sin looks like. And if you are not careful, you can fall into it. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you, even as you propose in your heart to live a sanctified life, to live a life that is dedicated wholly unto the Lord. Oh Lord, King of glory, I propose in my heart not to defy myself with the king's meat, with the things of the world. Lord, help me. By myself, I cannot do it. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Anoint me. Strengthen me to be able to, 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 to live a holy and righteous life. A life that is pleasing, a sanctified life. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Baptize me anew. Baptize me for power to resist temptation, to resist sin, sinful desire, lustful desires. Baptize me, Holy Spirit, with power to serve, with power for spiritual warfare, with power for overflow in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Tomorrow, God will do wonders in your life. Amen. I want you to open your mouth at this last quarter of the year, oh Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Do wonders in my life. Those things that have remained difficult, those things, situations in my life, that has remained difficult, that I am saying, Lord, when will you do this? Father, this last quarter is my tomorrow. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord to do the wonders. Wonders of breakthrough. Wonders of blessings that comes and make us rich and add them no sorrow. Miraculous happenings. Things that we have when they will say of a truth. This is wonderful. Things that wouldn't be possible ordinarily that the Lord will do it. Oh, don't restrain your mouth, please. Don't restrain your mouth as you are going into this last quarter of the year. Don't say I have been crying all over the years that nothing happened. That is a repetition of all. But say it. Say it. Say it, please. Say it. That breakthrough you desire. That peace you desire. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, do wonders. Do wonders in my life. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do wonders in our home. Promotions. Fruitfulness. Promotion is not only your job. When, they, when, when a woman is looking for children for, a, for, so, many, for so long, and now he, she gets pregnant, that is promotion. When you have been fretting at the edge of breakthrough, and all of a sudden now the door opens, 
are no more adversary to hold you back. That is promotion. As a lot to promote you. Say so promotion does not come from anywhere, but it's from the Lord. And when it comes from the Lord, it is wonders. It's called wonders. Miraculous happenings. Things that will make people to look at you and say, of a truth, God has a reason concerning this person. Lord, do wonders in our land. Do wonders in our land. I want us to pray for our family, for our parents, for our children. Oh Lord, this last quarter, according to your word that we have read tonight, your word says, oh Lord, that I should sanctify myself for all you the Lord will do wonders in my life. You want this three big ones that represent tomorrow. And like we had on Wednesday and Tuesday, God says, Tomorrow you will, I will begin to do wonders. And immediately, the first wonder God did was the wall of Jericho that collapsed. What is the wall in your life? What is the wall in your life? What is that wall that has stood between you and your success? What is the wall that has stood between you and your breakthrough? Tell the Lord, Father, let the wall of hindrances, wall that has limited me and hindered me from, from, from entering to my breakthrough, let this wall, in your mercy, let it collapse. Let it fall down. Let it collapse. In the name of Jesus. That wall represents obstacles. That wall can be causes. C-U-R-S-E-S. Pronounced against a person. That wall can be evil altars of our fathers and mothers' house. That wall can be consequences of our past sins. Even though we have received salvation, but the physical consequences might still be happening. Let's pray. Everything that constitutes a wall in your life, in my life, that is not allowing us to, 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 to have our miracle, our blessings, our success, our promotion, our fruitfulness. Lord, in your mercy, in your mercy, in this last quarter of the year, let this work collapse. We live in a very challenging season when men are saying, casting down all of concerning us, let it be lifted up. Let it be lifted up, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The second Bible passage we are using is 1 Samuel chapter 30. And David, a refugee, somebody on exile, his, his condition got compounded. Running from, from death, or what do you say, to fry pan, from what to fry pan? Fire, fire. fire to fry pan. From <laughs> hell, whatever. But that is his situation is is compiling is upon each other. But you know, he didn't say because of the of how critical the situation is to take situation to take the thing into his hand. He obeyed the word of God that says that we should trust in God and lean not on our own understanding. That. In all our ways, acknowledge him. And he will guide her. Yes. So what did he do? He went to God. Do I go? And the Lord said, pursue. For you shall surely overtake I want you to pray. Oh Lord, show me the journey to my breakthrough. 
show me the journey out of this situation that I have found myself. This situation in my life that has been in my life, oh Lord, show me the way out of it. Show me what to do, oh Lord, direct my footsteps. Lord, I don't want to do it myself again. Lord, show me the way. You say you will instruct and teach me the way I should go. Lord, in your mercy, show me the way. As you show David the way to restoration, show me the way to restoration. Show me the way to success. Show me the way to breakthrough. Show me the way to my blessings, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, pursue, for you shall surely overtake. Pray, Lord, this last part of the year, oh Lord, I surrender. I surrender, oh Lord. I don't know the way, Lord. Please, Father, in your mercy, show me the way. Show our family, show my family the way out of our situation. Show our children the way out of the situation they have found themselves. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. This last quarter of the year, October, November, December. Oh, brethren, I was saying on Tuesday, on Wednesday, forget about him, Bamon. The God of January is the God of Ember, is the God of October. The God that protected you in January is able to protect you in, in November. The God that protected you in February is able to protect you in December. Just ask for the way. Just ask for his leading. Just ask for his direction. Just ask like David asked, Oh Lord, King of Glory, in the name of your Son Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and Savior. Show us individually in this church the way to our breakthrough. The way to fulfilling destiny, O Lord. Show our children the way to a breakthrough. That situation in our life, that situation in our home, that situation in our job, that situation in our business, that situation in the life of our spouse, that situation in the life of our children. Oh Lord, show us the way out of this. Show us the way to solution. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Oh, for those who will be leading prayers this morning, please make sure all this prayer that you you also invite, talk, take prayer points in, on these two prayer passages. These two passages. Joshua 35 and 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now, along the way, God positioned what? A destiny helper. I want you to pray. That the Lord will position destiny helper. Send destiny helper your way. People who will favor you. People who will, who will be ready to go and to show you the way, to help you in the journey of your life. Like that. Egyptian slave, Egyptian boy that showed David the way to his restoration. Oh Lord, position people, help us in my way. Position help us in the way for my children. Position help us in the way for our spouse. That we might be able to fulfill destiny. That your original plan and purpose for our life might come to fulfillment. And what was the plan of God for David? Yeah. What was the plan of God for David? To, to experience restoration. To experience that restoration. Everything he lost to get it back. And so the Lord led him in the ways. The Lord positioned a destiny helper. And he, he restored. He recovered all. Pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know nothing is difficult for you to do. Lord, in this last part of the year, let me recover all that I have lost. Lord, I know it's not difficult. Ah, there might be darkness of coronavirus. 
this cannot stop you, Lord, for you are all powerful. Coronavirus cannot stop you. Pandemic cannot stop you, O Lord. Father, lift me up. Lift me up. Lift me up. Lord, your word said darkness can cover the world. Cross darkness on the people. But you say on me, you will arise. And your glory will be seen in my life. Lord, let this word come to fulfillment in our life as a church. Let it come to fulfillment in our life as individuals. I refuse to give up, oh Lord. Tell my tell the Lord, I say, but I refuse to give up. I will continue to cry unto you until that I fulfill that destiny. Until my joy is full, I will continue to cry. I don't give up. I know time does not stop you, Lord. Lord, have mercy and do this miracle. In our life, in our in the life of our children, in the life of our spouse, in the life of this church. Do your miracle. Thank you, dear Lord. Restore the lost years. That enemy that stole. So David, it's not only that David got that restoration. The enemy that stole what belonged to David. The Lord, the Lord made David to defeat them. The Lord made David to silence them. Every enemy that is holding your destiny in their hand. The Lord will silence them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not saying they should die. I said that the Lord will withdraw power from their hand. Amen. They will not be able to hold you captive anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Amalekite could not, could not hold David captive anymore. David defeated the Amalekite and everything was restored. Lord, as you restore, Lord, let the enemy be defeated. So that the enemy will not be able to rise up against me any longer. Let's pray for the church of God as we are rising up. That the Lord will bless this church. That this last quarter of the year we will not sorrow in this church. We will not mourn over any members of this church and their family. Evil will not befall any one of us. Ha! For family members, I want to take a kawa. If you are the see one. Our people, wherever they are in the, on the planet Earth, as long as they are related to us, evil will not be for them. Pray that evil will not be for any one of us. Evil will not be for our family. Evil will not be for this church. No one will die in this church. Amen. No one will be victim of gunshot and straight bullets. In the name of Jesus. Ribo Santana Bashe Kerebo. Masike Tiribo Sondarobo. Ribo Santana Bashe Kerebo. Father, in the name of Jesus, blessed be thy holy name, Lord. Glory and honor and power and majesty to be unto you, Lord. Show up for us, Lord. Tell the Lord and say, Father, show up for me. Show up for me this last quarter, oh Lord. Show up for me this last quarter, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, I commit every one of us here and those at home, everyone that is called by the name of this church into your hand. Father, please show up for everyone. Amen. That is, I say this last quarter because you can do all things. <laughs> Nothing stops you. In fact, darkness is light to you. <laughs> Coronavirus cannot stop you. <laughs> you even said people might be falling, but who will not fall? Amen. You said there will be darkness, but on, on us, you said you will arise. Amen. And your glory will be seen in Allah. Amen. You said when you are saying casting down, you will say lifting up. Lord, because you can do all things. Amen. Please. Every one of us, oh Lord, in your mercy, I'm asking that as we go through the journey of this last quarter, show up for us. Amen. Show up for us, oh Lord, Amen. in your mercy. Amen. And do wonders in your life. Do, do, do things that we, all of us will say, this is wonderful. Amen. Things that we say, this is truly the finger of God. Amen. Things that ordinary 
will not be possible to do them. Amen. Bless in blessing. Amen. Ha, make us fruitful. Amen. Ha, that storm, let it calm. Amen. Let your peace that pass it on understanding. Amen. Let it engulf all of us. Rains of abundance, let it come into your world. Let doors that we've been knocking begin to open. Doors of blessing. Ha, as many as man has been failing at the edge of bread to father from now on. Let do not let them fail anymore. Amen. Father, as the word of Jericho collapsed because you said you will do wonders, Amen. let every word that has been limiting us and our children collapse. Amen. Bless us and bless our children. Amen. Every storm in our home, Amen. every storm in the life of our children, Amen. every spirit of the bond woman, every spirit of demon that has been troubling some of our children, Father, we put those demons to death. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As a church, we pray, Father, show up for this church. Amen. Glory be to your glory. Amen. Let this last quarter be a glorious one. Amen. For each and every one of us, it is glorious. Amen. Each and every one of us in this assembly Amen. and all our family members scattered all over the planet. Amen. Happy New Month. Happy New Month, Happy new month of October. And lastly, the Lord will bless our the nation Nigeria. Amen. Don't give up on Nigeria, please. I know it looks difficult, but God is more than able. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up and give our offering. We are going to drop the offering here. Take your offering out and pray on it, please. Just add the Lord to bless it, to accept it, and to accept it as a seed that will germinate and produce good fruit in your life in the name of Jesus. Take your offering out and pray on it and say, Lord, I put this as an offering, as a seed, a seed offering, Lord. Lord, as a farmer plants seed and it germinates and bear good fruit, let this seed that I'm sowing, let it germinate. Amen. Let it bear good fruit in my life, in the life of each other, one of us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's come and drop our offering here. Amen. Let's turn. Amen. It shall be given unto you, O King. It shall be given unto you, O King. It shall be given unto you, to make your presence.